do it here. Hi guys, my name is Maddie. I started this channel to chronicle my time in law school and I actually just finished up my 1L or first year of school yesterday. I had my last exam in property. But since today is kind of like my brain break day between finishing my exams and starting journal, I wanted to film my weekly video. And this week's topic is going to be a desk tour. Obviously I've been going to class from home for the last six to seven weeks. And so I'm very glad that I created a space for myself when I first started law school to study and be productive and have kind of all of the resources that I needed at my fingertips. I know several people who plan to study at the library, which served them well last semester. But then when it came time to have to study from home, they were kind of like at their kitchen table and they didn't really have a good place to sit down and like get in the zone to get good studying done. From my perspective, it's super important to have that space so that you can create like this delineation between the rest of your life and your study life. So without further ado, let's get into the tour. Okay, so first things first here is the actual desktop itself. This is the Linman tabletop from Ikea. It normally comes with just screw on desk legs, which I spray painted gold several years ago. I've had this desk since 2015. So this spray paint job's five years old. Don't judge me and also ignore my overflowing wastebasket, please. And then I have the other side resting on, I think I, this, this is the Alex filing cabinet, also from Ikea. I wanted a white filing cabinet and the box actually said that it was the white one and when I got home it was brown and at the time when I purchased this um, I lived about an hour and a half away from Ikea I had made like a specific trip to Ikea to get a desk and I was like you know what screw it I'll just deal with a brown filing cabinet so it's a little less aesthetically pleasing than I would have liked but it does the job and I don't have too many complaints about it. The top two drawers I use for various school supplies. This is kind of an optional thing. Me personally I like to hole punch and then organize papers in a binder and that's why I have that. If you're not that type of person then you probably don't need a hole punch. So I lowered my ISO a bit here so that the aloha in the background didn't look so terrible to your eyeballs. So again, I've had this computer a long time. This is a MacBook Pro 13 inch from 2015. So the functionality of the MacBook Pro, to my understanding, has probably changed a lot in the last five years. But I will say that even though I have an older computer, I haven't had any issues as far as functionality with it for law school. I would not recommend spending a ton of money on a computer with like crazy graphics cards or anything like that because you're pretty much gonna be using it to type your memo, to take notes, and to do legal research. Pretty much as long as you can go on the internet and type a word file, you'll be fine. You don't need anything fancy. So as far as my computer setup, when I'm at home, I like to have two monitors, especially when I'm doing legal writing, because I'll normally just write my actual memo on the laptop and I'll have all of my research um, organized and displayed on this monitor. So it makes it much easier to kind of glance back and forth as opposed to having several tabs open or several windows. I just find that having a second monitor helps me be more productive. If you feel like you can get by with just the computer, then don't feel like you have to go out and buy a second monitor, that's just my own preference. So I really like the second monitor on the arm because I can adjust the height pretty easily. I can adjust the angle very easily. Um, I had it at one point on the other side of my laptop so it makes it really easy to change my desk configuration around depending on how I'm feeling. And I also like that for the most part, I can keep the wires tucked up, um, kind of running along the back arm so that there's not a whole lot of 
visual clutter under here because I do like a pretty clean and organized workspace. So because I am tall, I'm 5'11", I do like to keep my laptop on a laptop stand that helps it stay more elevated because when I sit, my line of sight is higher off the desk. And that's why I like being able to adjust the height of this monitor. And it's also why I use a laptop stand to put this on. So the stand itself is very portable. It folds flat. So if I wanted to bring it to school or to class or something, or if I was traveling with my laptop and expected to be doing more work, um, it's very portable and easy to bring with you. The stand itself has several different notches that allow me to decide on whatever height that I want. I like to keep it pretty high up, so I always kind of keep it on the highest level. It has really nice kind of like grippy things on the bottom and grippy things along the edge so that the computer isn't getting banged up and things aren't sliding around and it stays in place really well. So because I keep my actual computer elevated, I have a Bluetooth keyboard and trackpad, which I just have to periodically charge. These are both made by Apple. They were a gift, and so I'm not sure about the specs or the cost, but I will link this to the best of my ability below. Uh, I really like this, I've never had any issues with them, but these bad boys stay charged for weeks. So it's not like I'm constantly having to plug them in or anything, and it enables me to still be able to work and keep my laptop elevated. Like I said, I do like a clear line of sight, so I keep my highlighters and pens off the desk usually. So we'll go through these real quick. So I love to highlight when I do my readings and I have a color coding system that corresponds to different categories that I use in a case brief. So for example, I highlight the facts of a case in green, I highlight the reasoning of a case in pink, I highlight the issue in purple, et cetera, et cetera. So I knew that I wanted highlighters that would dry quickly, that wouldn't bleed through the paper, um, and that wouldn't you know, dry out or anything like that. And also, <laughs> I appreciate aesthetic very much. And so I ended up going with the Stabilo Boss Big Multi-Pack, and they are just like the best highlighters for real. I didn't arrange them to be aesthetically pleasing, I'm sorry. Um, but these are great because they have both neons like this, and they also have more pastels like this. And so depending on what I'm highlighting, if the paper's thin or not thin, um, the pastels are actually really good to um, not necessarily create such a like eyesore, especially if you're doing a lot of highlighting. I don't know, I just like the option of pastel versus neon. This set is more expensive, but it does come with this cute little organizer thing. And like you saw, it fits perfectly on the shelf here. If I'm sitting here reading, here I am reading at my desk, I need to highlight, highlight, can easily put them back. It's great. So these are my highlighter pens that I also use. These are made by Stadler. These I normally keep in my backpack. Obviously I haven't been going to class at school, so they're not in my backpack right now. I got these because there are days where I spend all day at school and I do my readings in the library. And I wanted to still have a versatile number of colors to work with because that is what I like. But I also didn't want to lug around 12 clunky highlighters all day. So these are a great option. Very streamlined, as you can see, they fit right in my backpack. These things are super quick to dry, so they don't smear or bleed. The colors are great, the tips are great. They also, by the way, do make smaller packs of the Stadler pens, and they also make, I think, a six pack of the Stabilo Boss highlighters. But as we've already covered, 
I love having options. <laughs> so I sprung for the larger sets. So the actual pegboard itself, where I have everything um, kind of like organized. Why is this not focusing? Okay, there we go. Th this actual pe pegboard I also got from Ikea in the same trip where I bought this desk. I forget what the, the actual pegboard is called, but it comes with all of these little attachments. So the shelf, those pencil holders, the little clips that are holding papers, those are all kind of accessories that you can add. So they have like 20 different options as far as accessories go. I will link all the ones that you see here and you can't really see the back part here. This by the way, we're about to talk about my obsession with sloths here in a second, but this is actually a notebook holder as well. So yeah, so if you've been a watching my channel for any amount of time, you may have noticed I have a minor obsession with sloths. So this is my pencil case. Again, obviously I haven't been going to class for seven weeks, so it hasn't been in use, but I have my sloth pencil case. My mom got me this cute little sloth magnet guy who just chills, mm, chills on my metal cup holder. And, and the other thing that's very pertinent to at home study is having plenty of coasters. So I have sloth themed coasters that I keep on hand at my desk as well. So next up is my book stand. Um, this one's made of wood and it's a cute teal, no, turquoise, I think, I guess this is turquoise. Um, it's a cute turquoise color. You don't have to get one that looks like this. They have cheaper metal ones. I think this one cost me about 20 bucks on Amazon. It does fold flat like I just showed you so I can easily stick this in my backpack and bring it to school if I know I'm gonna be doing a lot of reading in the library that day. This will save your neck because there is a lot of reading in law school. And if you are reading a book kind of crouched over the desk like so, after a while that is gonna hurt your neck. So the idea is that instead of craning your neck and staring at the book kind of top down, you can just be reading it and then taking notes. And it's a lot less stressful on your neck. And since you will be spending hours and hours and hours reading these case books, a book stand is, I would almost say, a must for law school. All right guys, well that wraps up my desk tour. Hopefully you got something out of this video and maybe have um, a better idea of what sort of school supplies you wanna buy in preparation for law school starting in the fall, or maybe ways that you can improve your own study space to make it work better for you. So my study space is always changing. I'm always trying to figure out ways to make myself more productive and more effective as a law student. So I'm sure this will evolve over time you know, in the upcoming two years that I am still going to law school. So whatever changes I make, I will keep you in the loop and I will be linking everything that I talked about in the description below. As always, if you have any questions about law school, feel free to leave a comment or to contact me through Instagram. Um, and if you're enjoying this content, please like and subscribe. And thank you so much, guys.